Well, if last night's debate was a boxing match, Rick Perry was the guy who took the most hits. But he was still standing after the 90-minute contest that tested all of the candidates' quickness. I think Governor Perry would agree with me that if you dealt four aces, that doesn't make you necessarily a great poker player. I was say, Mitch, you were doing pretty good until you got to talk in poker. I'm not particularly worried about Governor Perry and Governor Romney frightening the American people when, when President Obama scares them every single day. Let's bring in our company, Roll Call's David Drucker and congressional correspondent for the National Journal, Major Garrett. I want to ask both of you quickly, biggest winner, biggest loser. David, let me start with you. Well, I think that Rick Perry remains the biggest winner because nothing happened last night to take away his status as the front runner. And I actually think it's good that his opponents go after him now, go after him hard, so that we can figure out, or his campaign can figure out, if he can take these punches and still roll into the general election doing well. I don't know, Major, reading some of the analysis this morning, there was a sense that uh, he came into this a little less prepared than he had in the first debate. What did you think? I would agree with that analysis. I think Rick Perry needed better answers on Social Security, on the HPV vaccination issue in Texas. He needed better, issue, better answers on how he's going to take the United States economy in a different direction than it's currently on. But I would still say that David Drucker is right. Rick Perry emerged battle scarred, but he's still the front runner. Mitt Romney also was a winner last night because when people are not criticizing him about the Massachusetts health care plat platform, He's a net winner when no one's criticizing him about the house he's expanding in La Jolla. He's a winner. And Michelle Bachman was a winner last night. I think last night's debate was her last chance to reemerge or reintroduce herself as a formidable challenger or someone who's in the conversation with Rick Perry. I think she achieved that goal. Yeah, she did not as well uh, last week, a little bit better probably last night. And you mentioned Social Security. That was the opening shot. Rick Perry has called it a Ponzi scheme. Let me play that little exchange for you. What he just said, I think most people agree with, although the term Ponzi scheme, I think, is over the top and unnecessary and frightful to many people. But, but the question is, do you still believe that Social Security should be ended as a federal program, as you did six months ago, when your book came out, and return to the states? Or do you want to retreat from that? I, I think we ought to have a conversation. Uh, we're having with, that right now, Governor. This, yes, we're, that's, let me we're running for I'll, president. I'll... That was a really interesting exchange. David, who do you think came out on top? Well, in that exchange, it was Mitt Romney, and I think that the choice words that he used there were, you're running for president right now. You need to have something to say about this now. And I think that's where Mitt Romney is doing very well, and it's how he's keeping himself in the race. He's got something to say about everything, and I think it's because he's been through the process before. Major's right. For Rick Perry to succeed and stay on top, he's going to have to have good answers to all of these questions, and he's not going to be able to wiggle his way out of these things as the process unfolds. I want to play another heated exchange, uh, and you mentioned this, Major. It was over the executive order Rick Perry signed that mandated girls get an HPV vaccine. I just wanted to add that we cannot forget that in the midst of this executive order, there was a big drug company that made millions of dollars because of this mandate. The company was Merck. And it was a $5,000 contribution that I had received from them. I raised about $30 million. And if you're saying that I can be bought for $5,000, I'm offended. I'm, a, I'm offended for all the little girls and the parents that didn't have a choice. She had a quick comeback, Major, but also it was a little strange to say I can't be bought for 5000 I mean, it almost begged the question, well, what is the price? Is it 10000 Is it 20000 <laughs> It was just it was an odd kind of answer, I thought. What did you think? I thought it was the kind of answer that spoke to a wounded sense of political vanity, and I don't think that ever works for any politician on any stage, especially one as big as that one. Governor Perry has a case to make for that issue. He was the executive who made that decision by executive order. He thought this through, at least theoretically. He chose not to go to the legislature for a set of reasons. He needs to explain those reasons. He now regrets the reasons, but he still needs to explain why he did them and why on its merits he believes, even though he did it procedurally in a way he now regrets, he does believe he made the right choice. And talking about how wounded you are because someone alleged there might be some sort of financial impropriety doesn't get the job done on the substance of the question. Is there anybody else in this field, David, because we've been talking about uh, Perry and Romney and Bachman. Is there anybody else in this field who has distinguished themselves that makes us believe that maybe at some point they could be one of the major players? I honestly don't think so. While you have other candidates who have very 
articulate, interesting, substantive things to say on major issues. I just don't see any of them raising the kind of money, putting together the kind of team um, and breadth of support and, and to win the nomination, to actually make headway against the two front runners. And so I think major, is it a two or three person race? I think it's a three-person race now, but I would say instead of a three-person race or a two-person two -person race, probably two and a half. Not to say to diminish Michelle Bachman, but to say that debate performance last night kept her activists in the game, kept the money flow at least going for a while, and that was a crucial thing. If Michelle Bachman had not distinguished herself as directly and succinctly as she did last night, I think she was going to fall out and it was going to be quite obviously a two-person race. It's not obviously a two-person race now. She's still in the game. Major Garrett, David Drucker, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. More than 400,000 people have registered on.